Hello people, welcome or welcome back, you're watching GNR Productions, today we're taking a look at an electric scooter from Kugu, it's the Kirin M4, which has 10 inch tyres, a 500 watt motor, 48 volt battery and a top speed of 30 miles an hour, all packed into a reasonable price range, so let's get into it right now. Starting off, this scooter has 10 inch pneumatic tyres, which means you're going to have to pump them up yourself. These tyres have a recommended PSI range between 37 and 40 PSI. They have decent grip in the wet. I've done over 100 miles and the tyres still look great and still have plenty of wear and tear left. They seem very good quality. The rear wheel is also surrounded by the same tyre. These being pneumatics though, it does make the ride more comfortable but there is always a risk of a puncture. You can always get solid rubber tyres in the future if that's more your thing and you don't want to worry about punctures. The Kugu M4 has brake rotors on both front and back which give reasonable stopping power when the levers are pressed although my brakes were screeching a lot and even after 100 miles still screech occasionally the brakes will definitely need adjusting when you get this scooter out of the box as mine were horrible when I first read it. There are rear shock absorbers on this scooter they don't have much travel at all but they still do an average job of absorbing bumps you can drop off small curbs though although I wouldn't go over anything higher than maybe 8 to 10 centimeters, because you might find that the deck hits the curb and that's not a good thing at all. There is also two suspension springs located at the front. I had a problem with these when I got the scooter, they pretty much didn't even move, so I had to get some extended bolts so that the tension that was on the springs could get released and they would, move, they would actually move. I highly recommend doing this as it makes the rod much better and puts less stress on the scooter's frame itself. So moving on to this part called the crown, Funny story here, mine actually snapped on the, I think after a week of riding it normally, I uh, contacted the manufacturers, they said they're going to send a new one out as this never happened before, no one's complained about this before. I got one in two weeks and since then I've had no problems with it whatsoever, just a bit of a weird thing that happened really. So Let's move on to the folding mechanism, so if you want to fold the scooter down to get it into the car, all you got to do is pull the pin out, move the handlebars down towards the deck and that's it. If you want to unfold the scooter, you got to pull the pin out and snap the handlebars forward so it locks in place. It's as easy as that. Moving on to the seat clamp, this is where you attach your seat. The seat is very good quality, it's very very comfortable. So if you want to release the seat or to fold it in, all you got to do is lift this quick release lever up. That's going to loosen the seat, then all you got to do is push the seat down into the deck. That's how you're going to fold it. If you want to do it back up, just a reverse operation. So yeah that's everything about the seat then you got the indicators here also you have a rear brake light these brake lights will press obviously when you press the brakes you have a rear mudguard and a front one so yeah after that we'll move on to the front of the scooter where you'll find your speedometer your accelerate button that's the power button right there and you have your mode button as well let's turn it on see if you can get it on Oh no, I forgot to turn the ignition on, so now let's put it on, there you go, it's just turned on, it's on mode 3 right now, and as you can see I've ridden 100 miles, so just, let's just switch it off real quick, and then move on to the front, so obviously you have three modes, mode 1 is going to be up to 10 miles an hour, then you got mode 2 which is going to take you up to 20 miles an hour, then mode 3 takes you up to the full top speed, 30 miles an hour or 45 kilometers per hour. So as you can see you have your light switch and your horn, this light switch is going to control your LEDs on the side, your front and rear light. Um, you can't actually switch the LEDs off, which is a bit annoying. They do glow red, red, blue and green, it, is kind of, it looks kind of silly in my opinion, uh, it would be better if they were just white, but you can't change them. You have your front light, which is a white light, it's pretty good, it's pretty bright, you can see you can see alright with about maybe about a meter, a meter and a half in front of you. So here we have the deck. 
says the QM4 branding. It also shows you the voltage of the battery, the current capacity of the battery, and the wattage. So 48 volts, 11 amp hours, and 500 watts. Moving on, you have the kickstand. It's pretty good, it supports the weight. And here you'll find on the rear wheel the 500 watt motor itself. It is a very good motor to be honest and no problems climbing up hills even steep hills like a hill on your drive like my drive is quite steep no problem climbing up that so yeah everything's pretty good here overall i think this scooter is well worth the price i got it really cheap though i only got it for about 320 quid including delivery they're going for about 400 but honestly i think this scooter was even great for that price the build quality is okay but make sure you tighten all the bolts when you get it I would recommend that highly. The suspension might need changing at the front, as I said earlier. Other than that, it rides great. The seat's very comfortable. The motor can get up any hill that you throw at easily. I can get up hills that are like 20 degrees at about 15 miles an hour. I'm a heavy rider. So if you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, I'm nearly at 50 subscribers, so make sure to sub, like and comment what else you'd want to see on this channel. And I'll see you in the next one.